are going to be building this building over here, which is the Grand Pavilion. And this is going to be a joint habitat for our Indian rhinos, our hippos, and our Indian elephants, because we've, we've gone through H, and now we are down to I. So as you can see, this is the main habitat here that we're just sort of slowly circling around now. Um, we've got the Indian rhinos right in front of you, and then the next habitat is the Indian elephants uh, around the corner here. And then the hippos have a very good chunk of the lake over there. Um, the habitat has a boat ride going through it, and it also has this sort of main dome structure here that you can see sort of as the center. Um, if we go down, I'll have a, go give you a quick sneak peek of what it looks like inside. So yes, yeah, so this is what we're building today. As you can see, we have like an Indian elephant area. We have the Indian rhino indoor area. And then over here, we have our hippopotamus indoor area. And you can see that, you know, this hippo right here is enjoying a good old mud bath. Um, and yeah. So we'll take you to the speed build and I'll talk you through building this habitat. It's going to be a bit of a long video today, guys, just because it's such a massive build. And um, yeah, let's get to it. Right then, so today's video, we're starting off with building the actual dome. Um, obviously, this is, is going to contain three habitats by the end of it. It's going to contain the Indian rhino, the Indian elephant, and the hippo, because we've, we've gone from H now through to I in Alphabet Zoo. We're really cracking on with this. I'm really kind of happy with where we're going. Um, so, yeah, so this build is a very, very big build, and it's going to have me talking for quite a bit of time. Um, here I'm just sort of working out, you know, the details on the outside of the dome. Obviously, you know, it's best to have everything in one group, making sure every you have to make sure everything's attached to your group when you're doing this. Um, I wanted it to be a grand dome, which is why I started putting all these canopies and things on, just to make it look a bit interesting. And, um, yeah, it's a big dome, because we've got big, big large herbivores that are going to need a lot of space. So we've got the elephants, we have, I think, at the end we have about five or six elephants, and the hippos need an in, like, a stupid amount of space for this game. Um, which is also why it's built next to the lake, because hippos basically have half of the lake to themselves. Um... It would be cool if we had some proper swimming actions though, Frontier, you know, can we please just have our hippos not just sitting on the bottom? Can we have them like, you know, coming up and, you know, snorting and, you know, when, you know how they do when they come up and breathe and then they puff up all the air everywhere and, yeah, I want some of that, please. Um, <laughs> just, uh, if you're listening to this, not that you probably are, um, but yeah, I really was pleased with how these hippos and the sort of elephants were on the these kind of like I don't know little shelves I suppose um, I wasn't quite happy with the outside so I go back and redo it and again yeah so obviously um, this is gonna be that indoor habitat so we it's gonna be split up into three inside at first it was just gonna be split into two I wasn't gonna have the Indian rhino as like part of this I was just gonna have the hippos and the Indian elephants but I decided like halfway through I should probably put the Indian rhinos in here it just makes sense to do so it was an absolutely massive dome. In total, it was over 5,000 pieces, and I could not move it all in one go. I had to split it up in half. I actually was going to have it much bigger than it is, and then it was sort of shrunk down, as you can see. Um, but I wanted to have this very big, grand, you know, fancy building for, you know, it's a big sort of centerpiece. We're sort of almost halfway through now, so this is sort of marking halfway through um, a lot of the animals. Um, we're going to still have a few more reptile houses and things because we've got a couple. We've got a couple more uh, exhibit animals to get in, but we're we're almost like halfway through now. So this is sort of a, a kind of a marker, and yeah. So obviously, I think you know when I when I think of indoor, like large herbivore habitats, one of the places that I get I went to a lot as a kid, and I've mentioned before, was Chester Zoo. Now they had this awesome, like. African mud hut themed viewing area inside for the Asian elephants. They've got Asian elephants there and they have like a massive habitat there. It's really cool to see. And yeah, that's kind of what I was uh, sort of going for inside having this kind of these themed habitats. And that's why the dome sort of themed as well. Um, and yeah, so as you can see, the, the canopy actually has this really cool effect as to how I wanted it. So I was really pleased with how that turned out. Um, 
and again I was having a bit of issue working out the rest of this so as always I, I start something and then come back to it later but I was having fun with the path and um, just creating this kind of internal area where you can go in and then view the animals around you and then I also build like this kind of path around the edge I was trying to work out how I was going to have this working out at one point this was when I was thinking it's going to be half hippo half elephant but I then changed it up which solves that problem altogether but yeah anyway back to what I was saying so yeah I want, I want the guests to be really like getting really close to the animals in the zoo that is the whole point of this series that it's supposed to just be awesome it's supposed to be sort of you know pushing this like my ability of building I'm never going to be going into like hyper realism I will make things maybe a little bit realistic just so it's not silly but even then I'm not too fussed I've got a couple of ideas of things I want to build in the future um that are gonna completely not be anything to do with realism at all but we'll see how those go um so this was just working on sort of the fencing for the hippo habitat now the little it's kind of not realistic at all that's what I'm saying because um I mean hippos are one of the most dangerous animals in the world and we are just you know using a few concrete logs to contain them and you know we don't want our bears over there to jump into the water at heaven forbid and you know be eaten by a hippo um and again like you know the zookeepers they their area is just sort of fenced off by just some little stumps over here um i wanted to have like a little viewing area for them so they can like sit down and look at the hippos while they're on a break or something um so yeah i was just uh, doing a bit of rock work and planting in here and getting the hippos in so i could actually see you know what sort of space we have to work with um again uh, some bits have been cut out of this just because it's a really long video it's three habitats in one and it does take a bit of time and again i was i was using this kind of up and downy theme that i was using for um for the himalayan bear habitat but i did that with rock instead of wood so i thought maybe continue it into here it probably it probably works really well so i did like how it turned out um unfortunately this habitat is so big that when you take screenshots of it you can't really like show off all the little bits that i've kind of done because i've kind of made every sort of third look completely different to the next um which is a bit of a shame but i'm hoping that the tour video at the end will like nail that so yeah obviously as i said you know you would you would have more than just some shallow fencing for the hippos um because i mean they are dangerous animals and yeah so and again obviously outside we would have um i do actually in the end swap out some of the logs for reeds at the end i don't know if that's in the recordings because i can there was a lot of recording for this um but i do switch it out so in the main sort of tour you will see that it's reeds rather than logs and i really like how it looks i mean they have a massive they require a massive amount of space and they have a massive amount of space and they basically have half a lake by the time i'm finished with this um so yeah so this kind of indoor waterfall was sort of from again thinking of the waterfall at chester zoo um that's kind of what that was taken from uh yeah so now we start on the rhino habitat now again this was sort of uh shoehorned in at the last minute i didn't really think i was going to have them in um and essentially uh obviously again like i think of chester zoo when we have rhinos but also uh, one place i went to which was noah's ark zoo farm has rhino like a rhino habitat that you can get really really close to the rhinos in so that's kind of what i was going for um and same with the hippos actually here was with having the feeders like built into the fence so the animals have to come right up to the fence to feed um so at Noah's Ark Zoo Farm it's a, a very religious hyper religious like farm that some religious person um decided that he he was going to build um a zoo effectively and um yeah it's an interesting place because they sort of talk about conservation but they also you know talk disregard like evolution as a theory which is you know a bit strange um but anyway so they have there they have the largest uh, elephant habitat in Europe and they also have this kind of amazing rhino viewing area where you can get very very close to the rhinos and it's basically just a shed but in the shed because I think it used to be a farm they use uh, like a stronger version of like cattle uh, fencing and the rhinos put their head through the fencing and there's like hay and you can just get really close to their heads as they're sort of feeding um, feeding from the hay that's there and again there's like a little fence in the way so you're not getting so close but you're literally about a meter away from a rhino and it's really really cool so all the kind of 
uh, homemade fencing in this will be in um, on the workshop. So do check that out if you want some like some of the modified fencing. I did go to town a bit. As I said, it's supposed to be the Grand Pavilion. I'm supposed to go full on to town with this. Um, and yeah, they'll all be on the Steam Workshop just because I wanted it to sort of, you know, be different for each area and looking really cool. So this is just where I'm deciding like how much space the animals are going to have. The elephants have the most space, like land space. The rhinos didn't need this much space, but you know, I, it was going big. It was either go big or go home here. Um, and yeah, we're just finishing up some of these bits and this is the rhino habitat now. So the, the hippo habitat is pretty much done at this point. Um, as you can see the feeders there that I was sort of talking about. Um, again, like, it's often when you go to sort of like Chester Zoo and you see the rhinos there, that they're, they're sort of kind of off in the distance, they're not very nearby. So I was trying to incorporate having this kind of, you know, close indoor viewing area and then like they're a bit further away when, um, they're sort of a bit further away kind of when they're in their outdoor area, which is, you know, that's kind of what we, you sort of strive to have in zoos. So as you can see, the hippos are now wandering around the habitat. Now, it would be amazing if these uh, hippos could actually swim properly frontier. Um, it would be great to see them, like, you know, properly swimming, coming up to the surface, floating at the surface, rather than just sort of walking into the water. It is quite hilarious at dinner time when the zookeepers come and feed them because they all just sort of, you know, come out of the water in this kind of procession, sort of like something from, I don't know, The Lion King 2, where they've got all the lions that just sort of walk out of the water. Um, it is quite funny to see that happen. I'll try and get a video of that for the end and record that for you because it's quite entertaining to watch. Um, so yeah, I put this fencing in just because I wanted it to sort of, again, uh, hippos are very, very dangerous. They're one of the most dangerous animals on the planet. Um, they kill quite a few people every year. I think they kill more people than sharks kill people. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that the guests couldn't just slip through those, you know, trunks and get into their habitat and end up dead. Because, you know, that would be a lawsuit uh, waiting to happen. And we don't really want uh, Alphabet Zoo to be going bankrupt because uh, a hippo ate somebody. So... Yeah, as I said, I, you know, sneak, the realism is sneaking in here and there. The more I build, the slightly more realistic things are getting. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't really like to touch on realism too much. Um, but unfortunately, you, you do have to, I suppose, when you are building these things to some extent. Um, but yeah, so um, we have our two rhinos in. I think they're called Rocky and Roxanne. And they're quite happy with their habitat. And then I think after this, we start with... The Indian elephant habitat. Um, yeah, so I oh know we finish off the uh, the rhino habitat. So I was building another fence here for the hippos because I didn't really have a fence. And again, obviously, you know, it's a safety concern. Big, angry herbivore that's going to munch on you and guests just walking very close nearby. Wouldn't want any children to fall in now, would we? Um, so yeah and just some anti-fall sort of stuff that I've, I've been using throughout the zoo just to try and make it feel a bit more realistic i moved the people there just so i could see sort of the height of the fence um it is sort of again a lot of rock work the rock work is a bit messy but i don't really it doesn't bother me too much rocks are messy and again i find it interesting that this probably would be all put in by the zoo anyway a lot of this rock work it wouldn't just be natural rock work it would be put in just to sort of, you know, frame it. It probably wouldn't even be real rocks. It'd probably be like pretend rocks like they have at Chester Zoo. Um, I do love these big log pieces. They're my fa one of my favourite pieces in the game. Um, so yeah, just finishing the fence on the other side. Again, these fences will be on Steam um, if anybody's interested. And yeah, so that's just, there's so much to this. Like, as I said, it's a very long video and I've got to talk for 25 minutes. So if I'm rambling, then I do apologise. But yeah. It's just the finer details, I suppose, that were annoying me with this, that I wanted to get them sort of looking right. Um, oh, look, we have a uh, a big pause in the middle. I wonder why we... Oh, yeah, I remember I was having loads of phone calls from my family while I was recording this. So I think at some points I was just like, oh, I'm just going to keep building while I'm on the phone to them. And then I, like, stopped. So there might be a couple of other pauses that I've sort of missed. Um... But yeah, they were sort of calling me and I can't really ignore them because, you know, they're my family and uh, <laughs> I hadn't spoken to a lot of them for a bit. So, um, yeah, I have a lot of birthdays in my family this week as well. Like the past week, I think we've had something like, I mean, say this week, this video will be coming out a week from now. And um, I sort of meant like kind of last week. So this will be like 
two weeks from when you get this. So in that week, I have a lot of families in my birth, uh, a lot of birthdays in my family, not families in my birthday. Um, so I was ringing a lot of people that week. Um, but yeah, so I, I do quite like this. I, I really did like how this turned out. I think it, I, considering I didn't really know how it was going to look when I finished and I just sort of made the dome and it was a bit random when I made it. I thought it was a bit like, oh, it's a bit very colourful and bright, but I do, I am pretty pleased with it. And, uh, yeah, so just finishing off like this tunnel for the rhino viewing kind of area. Um, again, it's just sort of a matter of safety, just trying to make sure that people can't kind of maybe climb through so much and also a bit of decoration. Um, and now we start on the Indian elephant habitat. So again, because I don't want the elephants to just, you know, throw their trunk over and just grab someone and chuck them into the habitat, I just sort of put some logs in the way just to add that bit of distance, make it a bit more difficult for the elephants to kind of, you know, get close to the people. So that was my thoughts with that. That's why I put those logs in. They, it does reduce their space, their indoor space. They have got the smallest indoor space, um, I think. But it's just, that's just how it is. So this really annoyed me. I didn't really line this up properly. I should have done it with four meters instead of, I think I used six, and it would have probably lined up a lot better. But uh, it is what it is. I was going to have water coming from the ceiling, but I changed my mind about that. And so I made this little fountain because I was like, I want to have something in the center, this grand pavilion. Let's make it this kind of central piece. And so I decided I was just going to get like the elephants and just make a little fountain. Now, this is kind of reminiscent of the Trapper Center. Now, I'm from Manchester. We used to go to the Trapper Center all the time. And I, when I was a kid, they had this dolphin fountain. They still have a dolphin fountain. We don't know what's happening with the Trapper Center. It's apparently disappearing off the face of the earth, which would be really sad if it does. Um, because the company that own it are in that much debt and COVID has just completely like decimated it. So... It looks like the, the traffic center could be closing forever, which is really sad, but effectively they have this really like, it's a really themed shopping center. So they have this cruise ship food court that's really, really cool. So you go in there and it's like you're on a cruise ship. And so they also have all these fountains throughout the shopping center and they have one that's got dolphins on it. And the dolphin fountain was my favorite. I used to go throw some money in the fountain and then watch all the fountains go up and they would go, like they would just be, they were on a timer. So they'd, they'd be just, you know, pouring water out steadily for like, you know 15 minutes and then like after 15 minutes they'd have like a five minute fountain like shooting water show thing and it just used to excite me so much as a kid so that's kind of where those elephants were coming from that was just sort of reminiscent of that as i was building it and yeah and i'll be really sad if the traffic center that does disappear off the face of the earth because you know it is great for a day out particularly a rainy day out i don't particularly like shopping but they do things like you know laser quest crazy golf um there's like the chill factory next door which is like an indoor skiing area and again like the food hall is amazing so they have like uh they have like chinatown which is themed with like dragons and asian style buildings and then they have um like it's just different areas of the traffic center are sort of just different themes i mean the food hall is the best bit because it's just like literally like a cruise ship and you're on a cruise ship and you go to the food hall and they've got all like the fast food stuff and they have all the fancy restaurants like on the upper decks and it is literally like upper decks like they've, they've made it to look like upper decks and there's like a swimming pool in the middle a big screen so it's like being on like a cruise i mean it's probably a bit dated now but again they, they do like the ceiling they have like stars in the ceiling and everything um and then again like throughout the shopping center there's just all these like um paintings and things like like roman classical kind of theme so um here we have the Indian elephant habitat, as I've been rambling on. So I stole some of the fencing from the African elephant habitat, which I did actually go back and do reduce bits of the African elephant habitat, make it a bit bigger so we can have three adults rather than just like two adults and just you know make them a little bit happier. Um, I wanted to keep the fence away from the path again, just so the elephants can't like reach through and grab the guests. Um, and yeah, that's kind of why we've got this like double fence going on. I haven't really done a double fence before ever in any of my zoos, so this is the first time doing it. Um, I did like how it turned out. So again, a lot of the rock work is inspired by Chester Zoo. Um, some of it is sort of like the closeness and things like that, and the fencing is kind of inspired by Noah's Ark Zoo Farm in that sense, because as I said, they have the, the largest 
elephant habitat in Europe and they basically just have like three farm fields and it's massive so you know it's they've got like a pool but again they have this big metal fencing it's also like that at Longleat you can get very close to the elephants at Longleat as well um or at least very close to the habitat they you might not actually be able to get close to the elephants but it feels like you can because you can get very close to the habitat so I was just doing some fencing here, making sure the elephants can't escape. This is where I think I decide we're going to swap the rocks for reeds because it looks nicer and it looks a bit more natural. Um, eventually this island does become part of the hippo habitat because they needed more space. So I gave them it, essentially. And I do like how it turns out. There is a boat ride that's going through the lake now as well um, that I'll be adding sort of all the details to at some point. I'll do another video of like station video like I did for bamboo station and yeah so th this is just the, the finishing touches now again there's a lot to talk about and I'm having to talk for 25 minutes um, and yeah so if I am rambling I do apologize um, yeah a lot of this is rock work I am gonna be doing a tutorial in the future actually I probably will start on that this week um, so it won't come out for another couple of weeks but I'm thinking of doing like a rock work tutorial um, just how showing like how you can build like kind of realistic looking rock work and forest work as well mixing it all in because sometimes you know that is how you kind of encapsulate that natural habitat without using barriers as well like you can just build it on a flat surface and just use rocks and dense trees to sort of keep the animals in um particularly with some of these like some of the, the vegetation pieces provided act as barriers i mean that is true like we use hedges to contain the sheep in the UK we you know we have like very very dense hedges that sheep can't get through and you know what the best thing about hedges is is they keep growing so it's not like you know the fancy rock walls we have that keep degrading and they have to keep being replaced things like hedges are very very dense most animals can't get through them and um, it just means that they're also prickly as well so it just means that like it deters animals from trying to get through and you also don't have to worry too much about maintenance other than trimming it back because it just keeps growing Hedges are wonderful and we need more of them in the UK. We need more hedges everywhere. Everywhere needs more hedges because you know what? Hedges act like a wildlife corridor between different habitats as well. So when you're like turning uh, habitats into like woodland farmland, if you keep hedges in at the edges of the farmland, then at least the animals can move between patches of woodland. Um, we did have a, I think we had an initiative a while ago encouraging farmers to have hedgerows over uh, like rock walls and things. I mean, rock walls do like have their own kind of habitat as well. There are things that like rock walls, like adders and you know, um, slow worms and reptiles and things like that. But for the most part, hedgerows are superior because they act as a sort of an, a nest site as well for many birds and things. So if you've got a hedgerow in your garden, don't get rid of it, keep it because you're helping the wildlife. Um, and again, like you know, hedgehogs and things can walk along hedgerows and don't feel so exposed so they feel protected and it's just yeah it's just really good to have hedgerows we need more hedgerows don't get rid of hedgerows um and yeah so this was just another little viewing area here that um i made again wanted to have anti-fall stuff so people don't fall in and this is something again i've not really done before i did some like a, a little log rope fence and I was really pleased with how this turned out. I think it looks very neat and tidy and it just finishes up the habitat so that the guests can't run into, like you don't have some child that's just running around and suddenly it's in the elephant habitat with a broken leg and then the elephants start playing with it. We don't want that to happen. Um, so that's kind of what we're trying to prevent. Um, yeah, again, I think there was way too much vegetation in this habitat. Oh, this is where I start building like a station path. I've changed this and I might do an update video soon but basically I needed that station to be working so I did that and then I made some indoor shelters and we're pretty much finishing off now um yeah there's a lot to talk about and it's again a lot of it is just building anyway so it's I don't know it's hard to talk about stuff I'm building because a lot of this was just you know trying to make it look like it was structurally sound and adding details on things you know it's the finer details that make this game look cool so having like you know the how, how heavy are you compared to a hippo um having the education boards embedded in the walls and stuff like that so um 
yeah it was just finishing touches i wanted to have like i didn't like how open it was inside as well i wanted to have like little covered areas for the guests to be able to view the animals from um but yeah so they've effectively walked around this fountain and there's all these like you know bars across and then i did a little bit of lighting as well just to you know make it seem a bit complete because we went to town with all the lighting on the top and we've got lighting all around the edge so it, it seems a shame not to and I could not work out how to uh, sort out the lighting at the front it doesn't look amazing also I spelt pavilion wrong um, as well but here's some uh, more shelters outside and just putting in the street lights just to uh, kind of Put in the finishing touches oh and i do a little bit more lighting on the, the himalayan bear habitat too and just to finish it all off so yeah that is pretty much it i think we're coming to the end now and we'll go and have a look at the cinematics um but yeah so i'm making new planet zoo videos every tuesday and friday uh, so check out my channel if you want to see those and um, I'm also currently releasing a Shelter 2 series of just playthrough every Sunday so again check out that if you're interested and I will see you in the next video guys so take care.